so the other cost that we have is we're going to take the average of that fixed cost. So remember the, the total fixed cost is not changing with output, but the average is going to change. All right, so if I have a million dollar fixed cost and I start taking the average, well if I have one unit of output then the average fixed cost is a million dollars. As soon as I have two units, then the average is now $500,000 of fixed cost. It's, it's fixed cost per unit. Um, and if I had 10 units, then now my average fixed cost is $100,000. And so I'm just taking that fixed cost and dividing it by output. That's how I'm, I'm taking that average. So that variable cost is just variable cost divided by output. Um, but in this case, I'm just dividing a fixed number by more and more output, which is why this is just falling. I'm just spreading out that fixed cost among more and more units. So as soon as I, if I produce a million units, now my average fixed cost is a dollar. Um, so I'm just spreading out that fixed cost and I'm just saying, what is my fixed cost per unit? Um, that's all the average fixed cost is. This is just what is my variable cost per unit, um, which in this case, because we had this falling part, we had this falling part of the average variable cost curve, then if we get far enough along our diminishing returns range, then we start dragging up that average. But this average only falls, um, our average fixed cost. And then our average total cost is just going to be the sum of these two curves. Now we don't have to try to um, sum these exactly, but we're just going to look at what this picture essentially looks like and we get this U-shaped curve similar to the AVC curve. Um, and again, it's the sum of these two costs. So, so in the beginning, we often have a really high average fixed cost. So again, imagine we have that million dollar fixed cost. Well, the first couple of units, I have a really high average fixed cost. My average variable cost might be quite low. Um, and this is, may not be drawn exactly to scale, but imagine it costs, you know, just the variable cost is $10 a unit, $5 a unit, or something like that. It might be quite a bit lower. So in the beginning of this range, the biggest impact on my per unit cost, my average per unit cost, which is what average total cost is, including all my costs, the biggest impact is going to be that average fixed cost because it might be very high in the beginning, but then it's going to start declining very rapidly as I, as I spread that cost, um, like in the example I gave. Um, so in the beginning, the biggest impact on this falling average total cost curve is the falling average fixed cost curve. Um, normally. So we have this spreading effect. We're spreading out our fixed costs among higher and higher units of output um, and that's being reflected in the falling average total cost curve. Um, now eventually we spread out that fixed cost. This becomes a small part of our costs. Um, so again, million units of output. Now I have a dollar of fixed cost in my example. Um, but, but now that I've hit diminishing returns, the variable cost, which is what marginal cost is, is becoming a bigger and bigger influence. And so as soon as I hit this point, well, I've hit diminishing returns here, but as soon as I've hit this point, I've started dragging up my average variable cost. And eventually that sort of outweighs the spreading effect and is going to cause my total average cost, my average total cost, to start rising. Um, and again, marginal cost has to hit right at that minimum for the same reason that we saw before, because if what I'm adding to cost, remember what's changing with output is my variable cost or my marginal cost. If what I'm adding to that cost is below my average, and my, my average total is higher because it includes that average fixed cost, but if what I'm adding is below, I'm dragging down the average, right? And that's true until I hit this point, then what I'm adding is above the average, I'm gonna drag up the average. So for the, for the same kind of reason, that's going to hit that minimum point, minimum ATC right there, just like it hit minimum AVC, just happens at a, at a higher quantity. Let me just point out there's no particular significance about where this average fixed cost curve happens to cross these other, t in this case I had it cross AVC, it doesn't even necessarily have to do that, um, but it doesn't really matter where these cross because if I just change that fixed cost, imagine I had a $2 million fixed cost or whatever, you could just be shifting this curve around and might end up at a different point. Um, but what does matter are these points of intersection because no matter how you draw these costs, this marginal cost will always cross the minimums at both of these curves. Okay, so just a little aside, if we had a case that didn't have the increasing returns range, um, so again, I'm going back here, our simplified production function, which we're not really going to use too much when we start talking about firms, but if we did that, just to show you what would happen, um, you would still have this U-shaped ATC curve because you would still have that AFC going through here, and that would have that spreading effect still. 
Um, but what would change is that if I start taking an average of my variable cost, well now if this is only rising, then it's going to keep dragging up my average, right? So my average variable cost would actually be um, an upward sloping line instead of the U shape that we normally have. So you're not really going to have to worry about that too much because um, our standard cost curves are going to be this. Um, so we're going to be using this this uh, example where we have. So that's why we'll draw the marginal cost curve as this you know, kind of swoosh shape where we have that increasing returns range. But just to you know make sure you understand what's going on with averages, um, this would cause your average variable cost to be um, an upward sloping line. And we should point out that if we're drawing this precisely, these two curves should be getting closer and closer together. Um, because remember, the difference between these two curves is average variable, uh, average fixed cost, and average fixed cost is approaching zero. So if this is approaching zero, these are approaching each other. ABC is becoming a larger and larger part of my average total cost, and so these curves will approach each other. Um, so we now have our bunch of costs here, and if, if you understand, you know, kind of the intuition of what's going on, you have to memorize a bunch of costs. So um, marginal cost, remember, it's the change in total cost for a given change in output. It's the slope of that total cost curve. It's also the slope of that variable cost curve, because what's changing as you change output is the variable cost that also causes the, the total cost to change, um, but it's the variable cost that's changing. So it's the slope of both of those curves go back to those cost curves. And average is just um, the total divided by quantity. Right, so, so the way I got that average total cost curve is whatever the total cost is at that particular quantity, um, just divided by quantity. All right, same for our other averages. Variable cost divided by quantity, fixed cost divided by quantity. Um, and again, marginal product is the change in total product or total output when we change. So I should I should have labeled this. This is, should be quantity of input. Um, so this was a mistake on my part because if we just label quantity, we're normally referring to output. So this should be the change in my variable input. Um, and this should also be the quantity of my variable input. Um, total product divided by the quantity of input.